If you're fortunate enough to be truly good at just one thing in life, you really do feel blessed. But if you're into garden railroading, being good at one thing just isn't enough. Not only do you have to know model railroading, you have to be an expert gardener as well. Out in Maryland, we met one of the best. This railroad is a work of art. A work of art in the making for the past 20 years. Jim Strong is the artist. Strong is a self-made model railroader, as well as an amateur landscape architect. But looking at this layout, maybe amateur is the wrong word. Expert might be a better choice. His Woodland Railway is not only large, but also absolutely fascinating to look at. Altogether, it probably measures out at about 150 feet by 150 feet. It's laid out in two main sections. There's the section that was built in the woods behind his house. That came first. A few years later, the side yard portion was added. Once I did get uh, some track down, then I started thinking about, well, what do I want to put around it? And so, as time went on, uh, well, first of all, I was getting plants, and I killed plenty of them, trying to get them to grow in the shade. But uh, eventually, uh, I found the ones that would, uh, would survive. They didn't have to grow, they just had to survive. And that's where we got to the yews and the um, little cedar trees you see here and, and things like that. And I found moss uh, that grows really well here. Um, and does a good job of um, keeping erosion down and I found the plants and then uh, to keep it sort of I always was wanted to keep an eastern flavor to it so that's why I went to the uh, the kind of rocks I have here uh, rather than yellow or red rocks that are typical of the west so these are basically Pennsylvania field stone which you know come from Pennsylvania <laughs> I would guess that I've used about oh, three or four or five tons of rocks so far. Some of the same things that make Jim Strong's layout so impressive are the suggestions he would offer to anyone considering such an undertaking. Make sure you have a strong theme. The railroad has got to be as much fun to look at as it is to operate. Different things can help accomplish this. Make sure there's a certain amount of visual isolation in your design so that the entire railway can't all be seen at once. And I like it where I have to uh, walk around to see everything, just like you on the real railroad. If you flew over one in a helicopter, you couldn't see the whole line at one time. You, they go through trees and uh, through mountains and things like that. So that's a kind of visual barrier that I wanted to have on the railroad. So I've uh, planted um, trees uh, for one thing to, to, uh, and, and large bushes. Uh, the trains go through um, around hills um, that I've built up um, out of as rock and stone. Um, they go through tunnels, uh, anything to isolate uh, one area from another and force you to um, uh, walk around to see everything that, you, that there's there to see. Jim suggests that a layout design be as natural as possible, just like it is in a prototype. Let it follow a natural path and the path of least grade and least resistance. Build it like they build a real railroad. One thing you might want to do is build on a raised planter. It's easier to see and it's easier on your back, not as much bending over. And when you design your layout, make sure you provide for lots of easy access as well as operating flexibility. It's no fun if you can't get to the parts of the layout you want to work on. I advise people to, uh, who are starting out, to start uh, with something very small uh, in an area that they think they might want to build their railroad in, and then uh, expand from there. Um, don't uh, try to do it all on, at once. Don't try to plan everything out on paper first. Uh, you might have plans on paper, but don't try to do it all at one time. You'll find that you, uh, you try to build too much, you'll get frustrated, and uh, you'll never get, never get done. But if you have a chance to start small, you'll see what you like, you'll find out what you like, and you can go from there. And just listening to the names of the towns here, Hemlock Hill, Tall Oaks, Willow Flats, and Woodland Junction give you a little bit of an idea of what kind of plantings Jim likes to use. Up in the, uh, in the woods, I found that um, yews 
will um, survive nicely. Actually, they will, they'll grow. Um, then um, azaleas grow well in the woods. Um, they're a shade plant. They don't necessarily bloom up there, but they do uh, grow and, and survive. There is a arborvita that seems to grow uh, well um, in the shade, although most people think of them as growing strictly as sunshine plants. But it's funny, there's one that has a vertical leaf and then another one that has a horizontal leaf. And the one with the horizontal leaves, I guess that catch the sun better, um, do well in, in a partial shade. Um, so, and, they, and they'll basically survive. Then there are boxwoods, um, American boxwood and English boxwoods that uh, seem to do uh, too well. On the Woodland Railway, the big details are pretty noticeable. But if you look closely, you'll see that just as much attention is paid to the little details. Realistic, real-life scenes. Social vignettes, Jim likes to call them. Just little reminders that this fantasy land is not that far from reality. Now here's a bit of wisdom from Jim Strong. Don't get so serious about the hobby that it becomes too much work and not enough fun. Jim says too many folks take the hobby to an extreme. 